So 2021 has been and gone, and regardless of what you think of 2021 overall, it was a big year for Sea of Thieves. But was it the biggest? At the end of 2020, Joe Neep, executive producer on Sea of Thieves, came out and said 2021 was going to be the biggest year for the game. So let's see if that's the case. A point of note before we get into the nitty gritty, biggest can mean anything from level of content, expected turnover, revenue, player base, exposure, the lot. He was careful with his words here and never said best, but let's look at it from a content perspective, you know, what the fans really care about. Before we do start, do you think 2021 was the biggest year for Sea of Thieves? If so, why? Make sure you let me know down below, I read every comment, so let's get some discussion going. Season 1 kicked off 2021 on the 28th of January and ran until the 14th of April. What did it add? Well, Lost Shipment Voyages for the Merchant Alliance was the main gameplay feature, and the only proper one at that. These missions were clearly left over from monthly updates of 2020, so say what you will about that. Although they remain the best Merchant Voyages and are really fun, when they work, they're still a bit buggy. Other than that, we got the new Season Pass system, the Plunder Pass and a shitload of Emporium stuff. Overall, this was a step in the right direction for Ernable Cosmetics, but other than the Curse of Pirate Legends, most of it was recolours and the Plunder Pass was mainly old Emporium items. There was the Dark Adventurer stuff, which I obviously rock, and is a long term goal for any player, but ultimately it's become quite common. Overall, it was quite a small season, and to be expected really, with seasons being the new style of update. I'll get to the events for the year later on, as I have a bigger point to make about those. Luckily, we didn't have to wait long for Season 2, which kicked off on the 15th of April and ran until 22nd of June. The main feature here was the Fort of Fortune, a new world event tailored to Pirate Legends and Athena loot. It was a regular fort, with a red cloud, a horn when it pops, with some skeleton captains mixed in. The last three waves consisted of a skeleton lord, then two, and then an ashen lord, which were the same bosses we had from 2020. Overall, it did bring PvP back to forts, just like at launch, but honestly it feels like it was made in a few weeks. Rare generally are good at reusing content, but this felt underwhelming. Overall, great for PvP, but not as good as spanking new content, at least in my opinion. The second edition was resource commodities. This involved us selling goods, but some outposts would have surplus so you can buy them cheap, and some had a demand, meaning you can sell them high. This created trade routes, which would rotate every week. Ultimately, this was very lucrative for merchants and patrolling reapers alike, and an overall amazing addition. It was nerfed a few weeks into Season 2, so now no one bothers with them, which is a damn shame. Same thing really as Season 1 with the Cosmetics, Plunder Pass and Season Pass, all suffering from the same issues as before. Although, the Plunder Pass did have the Dark Phoenix stuff, which I love to pieces. It was a long season, but let's just say Season 3 was worth the wait. E3 2021 starts and there's rumours that Season 3 will be revealed at it. We all wait with bated breath and eventually we get this stunning cinematic trailer, only to reveal we're getting a Sea of Thieves x Pirates of the Caribbean crossover. So this is what Joe was talking about, surely. I for one think this was the best reveal at E3 for me, although I was slightly miffed we didn't get any flame heart, especially since two of the tall tales leaked ahead of time. Don't forget, up until this point we had Duke teleporting around the map, changing his voice and speaking in fucking riddles, leading up to this. The hype exploded, the player base exploded, my views exploded, everyone's did. It was a good time to be a Sea of Thieves fan. Season 3 drops like 10 days after the reveal on the 22nd of June, running until the 23rd of September. Season 3 added the Pirate's Life Tool Tales, 5 beautifully crafted tool tales that were bigger than any before. Imagine getting 5 Shores of Gold or Heart of Fires at once. There were less tall tales than Anniversary, although these were a treat for the eyes and ears. Rare clearly crafted these with love and care. I still have nostalgia playing these for the first time and there should be some footage on the screen of our first time playing. We also got some new enemy types. The Sirens, Phantoms and Ocean Crawlers, which is the first time we had any new AI land threat since launch. And we also got the Trident of Dark Tides, the undisputed PvE destroyer, which is the first tool we had, well, since ever I think. The Season Pass and Plunder Pass were greatly improved from previous seasons, with all new items too. Not to mention, the Pirate Emporium was filled to the brim with nice crossover cosmetics. Season 3 is what Season should be, the level of content we should expect, and the overall quality too. If every season was like Season 3, this game would be in an amazing place right now. The biggest issue with Season 3 was that the record-breaking 7 million players didn't all stick around and the game fell into a slump. As great as Tall Tales are, they don't offer replayability, and this hit hard. We finally got another season in September, with Season 4 dropping on the 23rd. Like Season 3, this was a large season. 
adding three sunken treasuries, mini underwater forts with ocean crawlers, sirens and skeleton enemies, and sunken shrines, puzzle focused mini dungeons, where there were six in total. Again, this was a beautiful set of environments, and the sound design here is unbelievable, easily my second favourite season of this year. It suffered from the same issues as Tall Tales though, so once you had completed the shrines once and then the final voyage, there was no reason to return to them. The risk was too high for the reward, the loot was weak compared to the potential time it took to get, and once you've done the puzzles once, you just repeat them over and over. Overall, this is more of a lore update, which is great for me, but most people don't care about the lore. This isn't a patch on the content, but we had some really bad hit reg and rubber banning after the update dropped, which frustrated players even more, understandably. Luckily, this was a short season, with season 5 dropping on the 2nd of December. Season 5's main draw was burying treasure, along with loads of other small additions to improve the overall gameplay, including sitting, sleeping, fireworks, the quest board, storage crate changes, cannon rowboats, whispering, and more. Overall, Season 5 was a decent update, but the main criticism is that the small features feel like complementary features, not the big hitters. Hell, even Fort of Fortune was at least a spectacle. The burying treasure ultimately didn't change the game the way it should have, and the quest boards remain empty to this day. And we're barely a month in. There's some lovely features here, but do we really draw a line at counting this as content as long as it has an overall point? Uh, I'm not sure. On the other hand, all the small changes are amazing, especially as a YouTuber and you guys really seem to like it. Maybe I'm in the wrong for this one. I think the difference with Shrouded Spoils in 2018, the update this aims to emulate, is that Shrouded Spoils added small changes that we needed at the time. It made the current mechanics overall more enjoyable rather than adding new different stuff, but stuff that needs a Shrouded Spoils update to improve them. I hope that makes sense. I'll use a quick example. Shrouded Spoils added the Mega Keg and buffed Fort Loot. Season 5 should have buffed the loot from Normal Voyages, or buffed the loot from Molten Sands, or even Fort of the Damned. That's a small change that refreshes old content, and it still has its original point for it. By the by, Season 3 and 4 should have been a blueprint for every season, but unfortunately, the first half of the year seems to have been stalling for the real meat and potatoes. Personally, 2021 was not the biggest year for content for Sea of Thieves, despite the triumphs mentioned in the intro. The title still belongs to 2018, and that's for two reasons. The updates in 2018 added much needed flavour to an overall barren game, but this content was big, it was impactful, and offered new and interesting ways to engage with Sea of Thieves. In addition, Rare was adding the Season 5 level stuff of Build Rare Adventures. If you compare these intermediary content updates to events, it really improved the flow of content, and quantity too. Events just sucked the life out of that and never added something as simple as a skeleton throne. With Skeleton Thrones, we physically had to sit on chairs with an emote for doubloons, and it was great, but we still had to shoot our asses up there and sail around to find them. Hell, think how simple gunpowder skellies were at the time, then compare it to events, which had us doing the same activities over and over, with no variation aside from Grogmany. We got the Meg, we got the Brig, we got the Devil's Roar, we got Fog, we got Skeleton Ships, we got a new world event, it was all fresh, where I can only say that about a handful of features in 2021. I think Rare did a great job of 2021, and the video comes off as a bit harsh, especially if this was delivered from home. The Pirate's Life, The Sunken Kingdom, and maybe Season 5 shoulder this year, but in no way can this compete with the lightning in the bottle of Year 1. Joe's quote was accurate as far as player bases, revenue, and exposure went, and hopefully the devs got a big bonus and their bank accounts are nice and fat, not Microsoft's by the way, as they deserve a bonus for all they've done this year. But as for content, I'd say this isn't the case. But I honestly believe 2022 is going to be amazing, especially since Captaincy will be coming. Hopefully. <sighs> I'll stop now. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe to keep up to date with lore, speculation, and discussion in 2022. It's going to be a wild ride. We've got some lore and an update concept next week, so don't miss that. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.